Do you need help protecting your finances as you enter retirement? David Dickens of KC Financial Advisors has got you covered. Welcome to the Cover Your Assets KC podcast. It's another Cover Your Assets KC podcast. Walter Storholt alongside David Dickens today. Uh, David is the president and wealth advisor at KC Financial Advisors, serving you in Kansas City and an office in Overland Park. Look us up online, listen to past episodes of the show, and tap into great information at CoverYourAssetsKC.com. That's CoverYourAssetsKC.com. David, you ready for another good show today? I am totally ready for another good show today, Walter. I think it, shows like this I'm excited about because we have something in here for everybody. If you're 20 or 30 years old and you got laid off, there's something in here for you. If you're a wealthy grandparent, there's something in here for you. And if you're getting late in your career and maybe you got furloughed, there's something in here for you. So this, I think, is going to be a terrific show. We're going to talk about taxes and strategies before December 31st of 2020, things you can actually do that might make sense for you. So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about today. If our show were a quarterback, it would be Pat Mahomes because <laughs> it's a versatile show. It's a very versatile show, and he's a versatile player, right? You like that little uh, connection there? That was really, <laughs> really well done, Walter. Thank Let's you. hope we see some of him this fall. Yes, we'll see about that. I think we will. I think we'll see some Patrick Mahomes. Actually. I think the NFL will get it figured out, even if college football doesn't. I think so. I think you're right. Uh, so, yeah, so let's talk about three reasons to review your tax and estate plans right now. And I'm intrigued because we've only got three reasons to cover, David, yet you said it's going to impact a lot of people. <laughs> yes, so <laughs> we better get busy because this could take a while. So what's but, the what's the first reason why we would want to review our tax and estate plans? Well, the first one is... Uh, so. It's about 80 days before the election. So it has to do with what might happen to tax changes in 2021 and beyond. So right now, uh, Joe Biden is leading, and there's a reasonable probability that he's going to be the next president. And he has said that he's going to raise taxes on people. So that means that there might be some good opportunities, especially right after November 3rd, when you actually know what happened. Well, we may be waiting a little bit. For the actual results. But once we know what happened, what he said is that for certain individuals, he's going to raise the long term capital gains rate. So there is a good reason to take some long term capital gains in 2020. There might be that reason if he gets elected that you would otherwise, you know, let ride into the future. And so everybody listening to this podcast knows that if you've held an asset, let's just say it's a stock, for more than a year and you sell it at a gain, that's a long-term capital gain. And right now that's taxed preferentially. Let's say you're in the, in the uh, 32% tax bracket. Well, that gain is only taxed at 20%. So depending on um, who gets elected, uh, Trump is going to leave that alone, but Biden would make a change to that and raise your tax rate on that. So That's one thing that you would want to look at after the election, but before December 31st. Another regarding the same kind of increasing taxes going forward would be there is a a gift tax exemption right now under current tax law. But the Democrats are talking about reducing that dramatically. So this is for our for our high net worth individuals that listen to this podcast. But stick around. I've got one right next for that's going to affect basically every estate that's listening to this podcast. But for large estates, if you've got over 11, I think it's 11 and a half million dollars or 23 million between you and your spouse that you're going to have after you die, the excess has an estate tax on it. But the Democrats are talking about reducing that to maybe three and a half million or, or a total of five million. But if you give that money away or a piece of that money away now, you get it. You get to do it under the old exemption, the current amount of 11 million per individual or 23 million per couple. So let's just say, for example, you and your spouse. Uh, maybe you're looking at giving away 10 million dollars. It's pretty cool if you've got so much money that you're going to give to the next generation 10 million before you even die. But what you can do is you give that away, and you don't pay taxes on that now. If you're a grandparent and you want to give 20000 to a grandkid, you don't pay taxes on that gift either. What you do is file a Form 709, which just lets the IRS keep track of how much you've given away. And if it ever exceeds that $11 million total, then you pay tax on it. 
So there's an opportunity. If you're high net worth, you need to talk to your tax accountant or your financial advisor to say, if they reduce that in the future, what can I do now to preserve the much higher amount of the exemption today? What about everybody else? Because the vast majority of people in America and the vast majority of our listeners do not have a $23 million estate. One way that you're going to be affected by this is that the Democrats are talking about eliminating something called the stepped up cost basis at death. Here's what that means. I have a number of clients who have inherited a stock portfolio from their mom or dad. And what happens is, regardless of what mom paid for those stocks 10 or 20 years ago, maybe she, I have one particular client whose dad worked for a company for years and they kept accumulating stock in that company and never sold it. When the, when the parents died, the kids inherited that stock, but they didn't pay a penny of tax on all of those years of capital appreciation. Because currently, there's something called a stepped up cost basis where upon death, the people who inherit that stock get to inherit it at the value that it was priced at on date of death. That is being talked about as going away uh, once, if, if Biden were to get elected. So there's something to do there, and you'd want to talk to your tax advisor or your financial advisor about that. But, but that potential, those potential tax changes will affect high net worth people and regular people. And there are things you can do in 2020 to better position yourself going forward. So that's number one. Very interesting. And and yes, for more on how the politics um, and political situation of 2020 might impact finances going forward, check out our previous episode of the show, which presidential outcome is best for my portfolio. And uh, you can get some details on what the different combinations of uh, a Biden presidency, a Democratic House, a Republican Senate, or if you plug in a Democratic Senate or Trump uh, wins re-election, you can kind of hear David's take on what those different impacts might mean for your portfolio. So just go back to episode 89, the one before this one, and you can check out that podcast and get more info on that angle, which is pretty cool. All right, three reasons to review your tax and estate plans now. First one's off the books. What about the second reason? Well, the second one has to do with Roth conversions, and we've done a number of, of podcasts on the various aspects of Roth conversions. And I'd encourage you, if you haven't listened to those, you can find all of those on our, uh, on our website under the podcast uh, header. But particularly what I want, about, want to talk about today are three different aspects. Tax rates are likely to be higher in the future. There are a bunch of different reasons for that. And I'm convinced that tax rates are going up probably for everybody, not just the super rich. And if that's the case, for a lot of our listeners, there is a good reason for you to do a Roth conversion at today's lower tax rates versus what they're likely to be in the future. That's number one, and that's subject to your view of whether you think tax rates are going up or down in the future. But what about if this year you got laid off or furloughed or your, sal your company said, we're going to keep you on, but we're going to cut your salary. And what you have is a temporary reduction in your earnings. There may be a good opportunity this year while, you have a, while you're in temporarily in a lower tax bracket to do some Roth conversions, take money out of your IRA, pay taxes on it today, and move it into a tax-free status. So that's not necessarily a straightforward discussion you would have with yourself. And hopefully you've got a financial advisor that is conversant in this. But that's a real opportunity for people who find themselves, because of this whole COVID thing, they find themselves temporarily in a lower tax bracket. So there's a real opportunity there for everybody. And then thirdly, if you're retired and already doing required minimum distributions, everybody that listens to this podcast knows that once, it used to be age 70 and a half, but now it's 72, where the IRS makes you start taking money out of your IRA so they can tax it. But this year, required minimum distributions have been waived. So you don't have that extra income if you don't want it. That creates an artificial opportunity during 2020 to take money out of your IRA, still pay taxes on it, but 
put it into a Roth IRA, which is tax-free forever. If you take money out of your required uh, in a in your IRA during a required minimum distribution, what you probably do is you spend it or you put it into a taxable brokerage account. But this is an opportunity to put it into a tax-free Roth. Roth conversions don't care whether you are 26 years old or 86 years old. You can do it. They don't care whether you make $10,000 a year or $10 million a year. Anybody can do a Roth conversion. Not anybody can do a Roth contribution. Big difference. And there's a, for a lot of people, a really big opportunity in Roth conversions during 2020. Interesting. This may be the year for a Roth conversion, especially if you were laid off or furloughed this year. Could be even additional opportunities for folks who fall into that category. So something for everybody to certainly be aware of. All right, we're reviewing our tax and estate plans now. If the first two reasons haven't been enough, David, what about the third one? (laughs) If that hasn't caught your fancy, here's one more for you. This year, we had an act of Congress called the SECURE Act, and it did a bunch of different things. But one of the things it did was to eliminate a beneficiary's ability to hold an IRA that they inherited from somebody and take little bits of money out it over their lifetime. You used to be able to take that money out over your lifetime, but now for most beneficiaries, there's a carve out of you know spouses and minor children, and if you're disabled, a couple of others. But most beneficiaries have to clean out that IRA within 10 years of inheriting it. Here's the catch. There are a lot of grandparents who have, a, who have trusts. And a lot of times what you do with the trust is you try to control things from the grave. A lot of times you're trying to control financial things from the grave. And a lot of times I've seen trusts that say, my son or daughter is going to inherit my IRA, but they only get to take out required minimum distributions. And upon their death, the IRA goes to my grandchildren. Here's the problem. The new rules under the SECURE Act, there is no required minimum distribution for an inherited IRA, except that at the end of the 10th year, you have to clean it out. So let's just say that this son inherits a half a million dollar IRA, and dad and mom say all he gets is the required minimum distribution each year. Well, that's zero until year 10, at which time the required distribution is $500,000. So what they've inadvertently done is cause son to have no income from that IRA for 10 years. And in the end of the 10th year, he gets to add the entire $500,000 to his taxable income. And the IRS is pretty excited about that. And arguably, there's little or nothing left for the grandchildren when he dies. So if you're that grandparent, and you've set up uh, your IRA such that it's going to be inherited and you're controlling things from the grave, you'll want to get with your estate planning attorney or your financial advisor pretty darn quick and make sure that you've made the changes that will actually get your wishes done under the SECURE Act now that it's changed the way RMDs, required minimum distributions, are handled. It's uh, interesting that you can see some major opportunities there. And, and if there's something you want to get right with your financial plan, it comes down to the beneficiaries. If anything would kind of wreak havoc on you know, not having things set up properly, that's one of the things that can decimate even, a, even well-laid plans for a financial situation. So that's a key one. Exactly. And, and well-laid plans are usually very well thought out by the person who is you know, who's going to give this, these assets away. And to have an, uh, an unintended consequence because of a change in a, in a law, that would be a really sad thing. And once you're gone, there are a lot of things that you cannot change that no court or no crafty attorney can change when you're dead. And one of those things is your beneficiary designations on these accounts. So you got to get it right while you're alive. Just spend the time and probably a little bit of money right now to make sure that you're still on the right track with those types of assets. 
That's a great point, David. If you have any questions about what we've discussed today and would like to meet with David for a complete planning review, you can inquire about that by calling 913-317-1414. We just covered three reasons today about a specific portion of the financial planning process, tax and estate planning. Uh, But it's really a holistic view of every different moving part and element of your financial life, making sure that it's all working together coherently and cohesively to get you to and all the way through retirement. If you'd like to get a complete planning review, complimentary, as always, you can get in touch with David here on the show. Go to CoverYourAssetsKC.com or again call 913-317-1414. And we'll put links and uh, the ways to get in touch with David in the description of today's show so it's easy for you to find that information. David, thanks for walking us through these three reasons to review our tax and estate plans. And uh, I should not forget the tail end of the headline. Now. Do it now. Um, (laughs) The the earlier you act, the better, as with many things in the financial world, right? No time like the present. That's right. That is David Dickens. I'm Walter Storholt. Thanks for taking the time to join us this week. We'll talk to you next time right back here on Cover Your Assets KC. Investment advisory services offered through Brookstone Capital Management, LLC, BCM, a registered investment advisor. BCM and KC Financial Advisors are independent of each other.